Hey, it's Coach Reeves. Today, we're going to go over review 3.2 to get you ready for the test. Got to probably do about half of the problems. Uh, so let's just jump into it, see what you can remember and see what we can get you ready for. Okay. All right. They're going to ask you to solve by factoring. So we need to factor. If we don't have a zero, we need to get a zero and then we're going to factor. Because my A value is greater than one, you can either use the box method or grouping. We're just going to jump into the box method, okay? But this back sign right here tells me that my signs will be different. So I set up my parentheses first before I get going. The signs are going to be different. So that knows, this tells me that I'm going to have to put each parentheses or each factor equal to zero because we're going to solve by factoring. All right, in the box method, I'm going to put 12x squared here. I'm going to put a negative 5 here. We're going to multiply this times this. You're going to multiply your a times your c, and you're going to get negative 60. Since this is a negative number, we're going to subtract. My choices, my choices are 1 and 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, I'm going to stop right there because when I subtract these two numbers, that'll give me my 11, okay? So I need the bigger number. The bigger number gets that sign. So 15 is bigger, so that's going to be a negative 15 and a positive 4. So I'm going to put negative 15x here, positive 4x here. Then we're going to factor, see what we have in common. I have a 4 and an x in common. I have a negative sign and I have a 5 in common. Coming across, I have a 3 and an x in common. Over here, I don't have anything in common, so when that happens, we know the number 1 goes into everything. There is my minus, so this is going to be my plus. So this is 3x plus 1. This is 4x minus 5. We put each parentheses equal to zero, or we can do that opposite thing, okay? Either way you do this, by putting each parentheses equal to zero and solving for x, you should end up with a negative one third, a positive five divided by four. Those should be your two solutions on this problem, okay? We're gonna keep moving. They're going to ask us to solve by completing the square. So when we complete the square, I have to have a gap here. I have to move. My first step is to move over there so I have a blank to complete the square. So I'm going to say 4x squared plus 8x plus blank equals, when I move that 1 by adding 1 to both sides, that's going to give me 1 plus blank. I cannot leave this 4 next to my x squared. That messes me up, so we need to factor that 4 away. So that's going to give me 4. That's going to give me x squared plus 2x plus blank equals 1 plus blank. But the rule is, if I factor, I'm going to bounce. Since I factored this 4 out, I'm going to have to bounce it back in. All right, so my next step is keep the 4 coming. I'm going to ask you to take half of B. Half of my plus 2 is a plus 1. Okay, so when we square this, all right, we square this. 1 times 1 is 1. We bounce the 4, and we get a 4 over here. 4 times 1 is 4. We're going to bring down my X and my parentheses squared. We're going to say that 1 plus 4 is 5. We're going to divide by 4. We're going to divide by 4. I get x plus 1 squared equals 5 over 4. Since my parentheses squared is by itself, I am ready to take the square root. We're going to take the square root of both sides. But since this is a fraction, we're going to split the radical. This is going to allow me to have x plus 1 equals a positive negative. 
I cannot simplify the square root of 5. It's going to stay the square root of 5. But I do know what the square root of 4 is. It is a 2. The only thing left for me to do is to move my 1 to the other side. We're going to move the 1 to the other side and put it in front of the plus minus. We're going to go minus 1, minus 1. My answer is going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. There's your answer. Okay? All right, next problem. I'm going to do two of them. We're going to solve by square roots. These are kind of easy compared to what we just did. We need to get our v squared by itself, so we're going to move the 3 to the other side. We're going to go minus 3, minus 3. We're going to get 9v squared equals 16. We're going to divide by 9. We're going to divide by 9. I get v squared equals 16 over 9. Now, in the previous problem, when I got my parentheses squared by itself, I could take the square roots. Now that I have my variable squared by itself, I'm ready to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root. It's a fraction, so we can split it. This is going to give me v equals a positive negative. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3. Over here, I still need to get my p squared by itself. I'm going to move the 9. We're going to go minus 9, minus 9. 5p squared equals a negative 40. I divide by 5. I have p squared equals a negative 8. Since my variable squared is by itself, I'm ready to take the square root. Square root, square root, p equals a positive negative. I know that when I take the square root of negative, I will get the letter i, okay? But this 8, 8 is going to break down into 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2. Here's a pair, a 2 comes out, that 2 has to stay in. So that's going to leave me 2 square roots of 2, but this negative will get me an i. So this is going to be p equals a positive negative 2i squared to 2. Okay? Let's go to the next page. Quadratic formula. Okay? Now, this is the quadratic formula. We will give you the formulas that you will need on the test. They will be at the very bottom or the end of the test. We're not going to label these and say, hey, this is the quadratic formula. This is your discriminant formula. This is your motion formula. We're not going to tell you what they are. You have to re remember what formula goes with what type of problem. But right here, I'm giving you the quadratic formula to help you practice on the review. All right, the first thing I want to do, if I do not have a zero, I need to get a zero. Okay? And then we want to label this. This is my A value. This is my B value. This is my C value. So we want the opposite of B. So the opposite of a negative 2 is a positive 2. Plus or minus. We're going to say B squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Minus 4 times. Let's go ahead and put this in parentheses. Times A, which is 3. Times C, which is 12 over 2 times A. All right, I have substituted all my values in, okay? So now we're going to multiply this. If you put this all together, or if you do this right here, that's going to give you a negative 144. 4 minus 144 is going to give me a negative 140. So this tells me I have 2 plus or minus the square root of a negative 140 over 6. I'm going to have to break down the negative 140. Now it turns out that when you do a factor tree with 140, this could be 2 times 70, this could be 2 times 35, and that's 5 times 7. There's your pair. I can take out a 2, but I'm going to have to leave my 35 inside. But it's a negative, and since it's a negative, I will get an i. So when I simplify this, I'm going to get 2 plus or minus, the 2 comes out, 
2 square root of 35. The negative gets me an i over 6. But the rule is, if you can find a number that goes into all three of these values because they're outside the radical, then we can reduce. And the number 2 goes into all three. So we're going to say that 2 goes in here one time, 2 goes in here one time, 2 goes in here three times. So when I get the final answer, I am looking at 1 plus or minus, try this again, 1 plus or minus, this, uh, the 1 cancels. You can put the 1 here, I'm just going to put the i, square root of 35 over 3. There's your final answer, okay? All right, let's go to the next. We have a linear and a quadratic system. We need to solve this. This one is a little bit trickier than the worksheet that you had, okay? Because on the worksheet that you had, it was y equals, y was by itself. But look at this, there's a new wrinkle. x is by itself, and we're gonna move the two y so x is still by itself. So we're going to go minus 2y minus 2y x equals y squared minus 2y minus 3. Now, since x is by itself and x is by itself, we can set those equal to each other. We can say that y minus 5 equals y squared minus 2y minus 3. We will move this to the other side. We will go minus y, minus y. We will say plus 5. We will say plus 5. And I get 0 equals y squared minus 3y plus 2. And now we will factor. It's the same thing we did except we had x's by itself. We did this on the, we did this on the other worksheet. When I factor this, Two parentheses, signs are the same, they're both going to be minuses. We break down the y squared as y times y, we break down the 2 as 1 times 2. Now to solve this, remember we can put each parenthesis equal to 0, or we can take the opposite, but look what letter, this is the y value, y is going to be 1, y is going to be 2. And if you remember how we found the solution is we're going to have possibility of two ordered pairs, one ordered pair, or no ordered pairs. But in this, in this station, let's look. I'm going to have two parentheses. These are y values because this is a y inside the parentheses. One of my y values will be one. One of my y values will be two. How do I find the x value? I'm going to take this one and I'm going to substitute it right here where x is by itself. And I'm going to say 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. And then I'm going to substitute the 2. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. There's my solution. There's my two ordered pairs. Okay? All right, let's keep going. They're going to ask you to find the discriminant. And after defining the discriminant, they're going to ask you for the number and type of solutions. Okay? Hopefully this is an easy problem for you when you take the test. But we feel, still have to get a zero. This is not a zero, so I have to move the 10 to the other side. We're going to go plus 10, plus 10. And when I do this, that's going to give me 9x squared minus 3x. And then I have a negative 8 plus 10. That's going to give me a positive 2. This is my A, this is my B, this is my C. They're going to ask me to square the B. So negative 3 times negative 3. They're asking you to go negative 3 squared minus 4 times A times C, which is a 2. Okay? When, when you square this, negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. But the scary part is, I need you to take care of that. That is all multiplication, no subtraction. Do not do any subtraction right now, okay? Negative 4 times 9 is a negative 36. 
times 2 is a negative 72. That's going to give me a negative 72 or a minus 72. So when I put that, 9 minus 72 is going to give me a negative 63. This is the discriminant. That's what they asked me to find the discriminant. Since that is a negative number, you would tell me that I have 2. That is the number. And the type is imaginary because it's a negative. Two imaginary solutions. Good? All right. Moving forward. Now we're going to get into some word problems. Okay? Don't panic. Look what I told you. We're going to give you the word problems, the formulas for the help you, or the equations to help you for the, for the test. But they're all going to be in one area. You have to know which formula or which equation to use with which type of problem. Remember, if it's a negative 16, we're dealing with feet in the problem. If it's a negative 4.9, we're dealing with meters. You need to make sure you remember that. Okay? So it says, Owen hit a flop shot with the sand waves to get out of a sand trap. He was six feet below ground level. There's his starting height. He's going to be six feet below, so that's going to be a negative six for his starting height. He hit the ball with an initial velocity of 45 feet per second. What is the max height? What is the max height? Okay. So all these feet, feet, feet things tell me that we're going to use negative 16. I'm going to say that y equals a negative 16x squared. His, uh, his initial velocity was 45. And his starting height was a negative 6 because he was 6 feet below ground level. Okay, There's your equation that you put into the calculator. We're going to do that, but we want to find the max height. And remember, x equals time, y equals height. So we want to find a y value. So into the calculator we go. Maybe. There it is. Okay, so we got y equals negative 16x squared plus 45x minus 6. We're going to hit, uh oh, the q. x minus 6, enter. I need to adjust my window, okay? I need to find out how high this is going to go. Um, not sure, so we're going to go menu, window, window settings. I need to adjust my Y maximum. It's a little easier for you than me on this. Uh, I don't know, so I'm just going to say 75. I'm just going to guess. Okay, that was too much, but still I can see the top. And I want to find the max. So we're going to say menu, analyze. We're going to find the maximum. We're going to go to the left, to the right. This is, remember what it says, we're looking for the maximum height. Here's the max height. This is time. This is height. So it's going to say we took 1.41 seconds to reach a maximum height of 25.6 feet. There's your answer, 25.6 feet. Now, when you take your test, there's gonna be certain word problems where they ask you to round to the nearest tenth or to the nearest hundredth. You need to pay attention on how to round, okay? But the answer here is 25.6. What is the maximum height? 25.6. All right, we'll go to another problem. World famous cliff diver, Donovan Nicario. Okay, everybody knows Donovan, he's an incredible diver. All right, so he's at the World Championships in Acapulco. Donovan launches himself from 136 feet above the sea level. All right, so here we go, we have, let's go ahead and draw us. We got a little cliff, Donovan's gonna dive. Yay, here's Donovan. He's gonna dive into the water, okay? The cliff, is 136 feet above sea level. 
okay? He takes off with an initial velocity of 12 feet per second. Determine how long will it take him to be at a height of 40 feet. So he's gonna jump, he's heading for the water. They wanna know when he's gonna reach 40 feet. And since we're gonna measure before he hits the water, we need a second equation. We need that second equation where we're trying to measure it before he actually hits sea level. Okay? First equation, since we're using feet, the first equation should be y equals a negative 16x squared, initial velocity of 12. My starting height is 136 feet. There is the first equation you put into the calculator. Then you hit tab and you put in your second equation of y equals 40 because we're looking for that. And now here's what we're going to do. We want to find this intersection. We want to find, we're looking for time because it says how long will it take him. We're looking for time, which is an x value. So we're going to put these two equations in the calculator, look for this intersection, and look for the x value. So we're going to a graph, we're going to say negative 16, oops, 16x squared, delete, squared, there she is, okay, plus 12x for initial velocity, leave, I need to adjust the board, ah, look, really needs to be calibrated. Uh, plus 136. We're going to hit enter. We're going to hit tab. And we're going to need another equation. We're going to say 40. And we're going to hit enter. Now we can't see enough. So I have to adjust my height, my, my Y max. Okay? Now the cliff was 136 feet. So we need to go probably 150. So we're going to adjust our window. We're going to say menu. Window, window settings, we're going to change this. We're going to say it's a 150 because he started at 136. I'm looking for this intersection. He jumps from the cliff. They want to know when he's going to be 40 feet off the ground. So we're going to say menu, analyze, intersection. We're going to go to the left, to the right, and my inner... Uh, There it is. There's my intersection. No, that's 39 point feet. Uh, let's go control escape. Okay, let's try this again. There it is. Goes back to normal. Menu, analyze, intersection. To the left, to the right. See if we can get that. 2.85, you see that. How do I know that's a better answer? Because my line should have been at 40, okay? That's how you know if you mess up and get something else. It took me 2.85 seconds, 2.85 seconds to reach the height of 40 feet. So my answer is two. Now, if they ask you to round, you maybe could round that to 2.9. You need to pay attention and answer what they're asking on the, on the test, okay? So this would be 2.85 seconds. Okay, let's go to another one. It says, Matthew is shooting skeet with some friends. Okay, he's got a clay pigeon target that was launched in a path uh, represented by this equation. All right, this is a quadratic equation. So if they're on the, on the ground and you have, you have a, a, a skeet that was launched, with this equation, just say it's coming right there, and you have, he, he raised his shotgun, and he, shoulder, and he fired a shot at the target, and it followed a straight path represented by this equation, which is a line. You have a quadratic and you have a linear. We can solve it algebraically like we did earlier in the, in the review sheet. 
but we also know that you have learned how to use your calculator to solve this and look for these two intersections. We need to find this intersection and we need to find that intersection. So we're going to put these two equations in our calculator and find those intersections. Maybe. There it is. First equation, negative 1 divided by 8x squared plus 3x minus 3 plus 3x minus 3. Enter. There's my quadratic. And we're going to adjust the window in just a second. But we need to put in our second equation, so we're going to hit tab. And then we're going to put in 1 half, 1, divided by 2, x, plus 5. So we're going to adjust the window. We're going to say menu, window. In this case, we're just going to zoom out. That would be the easier one to do on this. And we're going to hit enter. I need to find this intersection and this intersection. We know how to find the intersection because we just did it on a previous problem. So we're going to say menu, analyze, intersection to the left, to the right of it, and it's going to tell us one of our answers is 4, 7. We're going to repeat the process, menu, analyze, intersection to the left, to the right of the intersection. Oops, we got the wrong thing. Let's go back here, control escape. And there it is, 16, 13. Those are our two answers. Those are our two intersections. Not that hard, okay? Going back to the review. One more problem. Okay, Mrs. Vaca wants to frame her painting that she crafted if the dimensions of the picture are 40 by 24. So she's gonna create this rectangle, okay? and it's 40 by 24. This is 24, this is 40, okay? She adds, here's the key word, she adds a frame. Remember when we have these area problems, we can start small and get bigger by adding, or we can start big and get smaller and subtract. This one, we have the picture, and she wants to put a frame around it. She's gonna add a frame around her picture. So since we're getting bigger, we do what? We add. We're going to add x to this side and to this side. We're going to add x to this side, add x to this side. So my new dimensions for my area problem for my picture is going to be this. 40 plus 2x, 24 plus 2x. Because we're adding x's on each side. And we said that the total area will be 1350. Now we've worked these problems before. We need to get a Y or a zero so we can put it into the calculator. To do this, I'm gonna ask you to move this to the other side. We're gonna subtract it. And so we're gonna get zero equals 40 plus two X, 24 plus two X minus 1350. That's what we're going to put into the calculator, okay? So let's go try this. Remember what we said? We said in parentheses, and we're going to say 40 plus 2x. We're going to close it. We're going to open it. We're going to say 24 plus 2x. We're going to close it, and we're going to say minus 1350. And we're going to hit enter. I can't see. I need to see both sides of my parabola. So we're going to zoom out. We're going to say menu, window, zoom out. We're going to hit enter. I still cannot see both sides, so we're going to hit enter again. Enter again. Finally, there they are. I see both sides, okay? But we're talking about, we're looking for an X value, okay? The X is the distance from the picture to the edge of the frame. 
And since x is a distance, we cannot have a negative distance. So that eliminates this number over here because it's a negative number on this side of the, of the y-axis. This is the number we're looking for. So we're going to say menu, analyze. We're going to look for the 0, and we're going to go to the left. Let's try this again. Menu, analyze, 0 to the left, to the right, and there it is. The width, the width of the frame is 2.8 inches. But let's go back and read what the question asked. It says, find the dimensions of the frame. So that means this was 2.8 over here. This is 2.8. When I add those together, that's going to give me 5.6. So I need to go 40 plus 5.6. So my dimension will be 45.6 by, and then I have to add 5 plus 5.6 to that, and my other dimension will be 29.6. They didn't just ask how wide would the frame was going to be or the border. They asked for the new dimensions. Make sure you answer the question that they ask you. Okay? Now that's kind of quick. I've worked about half of those problems, maybe just a little bit less than half. Okay? It's going to give you a guide to how to work those problems. Please don't wait to the last second to do your review sheet. Start it. Um, Please get started so we can answer your questions on Tuesday for sure. All right, good luck.